What's going on guys and girls? So in this video, I'm going to show you all the difference between ray tracing on and ray tracing off. Now, one of the questions I get in the channel is, hey, what kind of computer spec do I need? What kind of GPU do I need? I have an Intel graphics card right now. Do I really need ray tracing? Well, ray tracing is one of those things that when it first came out, I thought it was a gimmick. But last year when I started learning Unreal Engine 4 and actually started using ray tracing, right away I knew that it's not a gimmick. It's actually legit. So I was glad I came from a GTX card and I had to switch over to an RTX card to get the ray tracing capability and I'm just so glad I did. So I have a simple scene here for you all I'm gonna show you here and let's go ahead and scale this person, this robot. Now this robot is made by uh, Michael Weishim that I always talk about. I'll put the link in the description below. But let me just um, rescale him here because he's obviously off scale. And I'm just going to show you really the difference. And all we're doing is once we set this character up, we're going to turn on ray tracing off and on. And as you can see... Even with ray tracing off, this is ray tracing off. If I go to project settings and I type in ray tracing, you're going to see it's off. Additionally, in my post process volume, I have everything turned off. So ray tracing off, ray tracing off, and I have screen space reflection on. So if I turn this on and off, you're going to see that here as well. But I have screen space because we're going to compare screen space versus ray tracing. All right, so let's save this. Control Alt S. So let's create a new cinematic here because I want to see this scene through a lens or through a camera. So I'll add this robot here. I really wish you would make more because, man, I need more of these robots. It's so high quality. What is that up there? Looks like his lights or something from his uh, from his armor, but we'll sort, we'll sort that out later. I'm going to create a camera. We're not going to do anything too fancy here, really. Just to, uh, we're going to crop in. And I'm going to hide this because I have the background hidden here. So it's not distracting. Press H on this and that's going to hide that, all right? So here's our Robro here. Let's, uh, let's change the camera to a, a 50. Get a little bit more bokeh there. And we'll just focus him. Okay. We'll turn on our focus assist. You usually like to get up in there like that. Ooh, not too much. Give me some of this ice. Right there. Okay. So that looks good. Let's save it again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to render 10 frames of these. And then we're going to take a, st a screenshot of it. A still... And we're going to take it to After Effects and we're going to compare the difference. All right. It's better to do it side by side. Looks like I have to build some reflections. That's okay. We're going to click on build and should be build reflection captures. So let's go to our movie render queue and the sequence name is robot. So here and I'm going to put robot. I'm going to go to this and let's do a PNG because it's just a little bit higher quality. I usually like working with PNG anyway. And then for the output, we're going to just do a DCI 4K. And we're going to capture, let's do 24 frames. I'm going to change this to robot. And then we're going to name this to no RTX. Okay. And then I'm going to name this to RTX off. And we're going to render local. Okay, so that's done. And what we'll do now is just turn on ray tracing and then render the same exact frames, okay? So we'll go to edit, project settings, ray trace on, and RHI to DirectX 12 right here. Good. So I have to restart, and this is going to compile a lot of shaders. So I'm going to turn it off and come right back. All right, so we're back in the project. Now we have ray tracing on, and you can probably tell the difference already, but we're going to go further. I'm going to try and push the RTX 3090 to the max here. 
so you can really see the capabilities of this thing okay so we have ray tracing on and if we look at our post process right here and I turn it off turn it on you see nothing is really happening yet because we had everything turned off but pay attention because this is about to get nuts so ambient occlusion I'm gonna turn on ray trace ambient inclusion occlusion right there we're gonna turn on GI as well you can definitely see that you see that the GI global illumination so what that's doing is it's bouncing all these lights and it's actually like mimicking real life so when it the direction of light hits the surface, it just bounces stuff, and that's why you're getting a lot of bounce, I guess, from the floor everywhere you go, and it's taking in that color. I made a NVIDIA RTX 3090 for NVIDIA showcasing this a little bit better, but in reality, the global illumination is really just light bouncing everywhere, because in real life, that's how it works. Now, I have it 16 right now, and let me turn on that FPS, because, okay, so we're still good right now. That sample is pretty high at 16, so let me let me start it at 4 real quick, and you're going to see we're going to get some FPS back. So we have screen space right now. I'm going to turn it off. Turn it on. Switch it to ray tracing. Turn it on, turn it off. I'm going to turn off the screen space, because we're not using that. And now we're going to use this baby right here. I'm going to change the bounce to 1 because of my F. You already see that right here. The more I add these, the more laggy I'm going to get. So this is on. I mean, this is off. And this is on. And whenever we render this, you're really going to see it. All right, I'm not going to turn on translucency. I'm going to leave that to raster because I have issues with ray tracing translucency. Okay, so let's save this. Because right now, what I'm going to do is pretty much make the RTX 3090 cry. So I'm going to press escape. Okay, this is bothering me. So let me just move that. Okay, so we have infinite bound on. Priority is one. Blam node is one. So here we go. On the reflection side, watch my, uh, watch my FPS here. Let's turn this to 64. Oh, that's gone. All right, so 32. Get about 6 FPS, and this is, again, what's so exciting about Unreal is I'm not even pushing it, you know? Like, all these renders you're seeing, that's just, that's not it. <laughs> you know, when 8090 comes out, whenever that comes out, it is going to be bananas, right? So... Here's a cool trick. So that's live, right? You're seeing it as I'm changing it. But like majority of you guys out there, you're not going to have this power to just live everything real time. So what we're going to do is when we render this out, we're actually going to crank it using a console command. All right? So if I go to the movie render queue again, and I'm going to type in robot, and let's set everything up. Same as we set up the other one before. So this is RTX on. Okay. And we're going to go here. RTX on. 4096. 2160p. This is DCI 4K. And we're going to render 24 frames. All right. And we're going to change this because we grabbed the PNG. All right. So if I go to settings and I go to console variables right here, I can actually add some cheat codes in there. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side. And what we actually want is the ray tracing reflections sample per pixel right here. Okay. And if you want to know some commands and you want to mess around with it, you can go to your output log. If you go to windows, you go to developer tools, you go to output log. This is going to open up your console you know you can go like operation seawall okay that's not really a real thing you can go here and if you can go reflection right and you scroll down you're gonna look for sample pixels per pixel so it should be ray tracing 
okay? Now, I could have just typed it, but I want you to show all of these options here. Okay. So let's go look for that. Our tracing, our tracing, sample, there it is. I'm going to click on this, reflections.samples per pixel, and I'm going to put a question mark on there. All right. Default is negative 1 driven by post-processing volume. So this means that I have it set at negative 1. That means that whenever I render, it's going to go with this. Okay? So I'm going to copy this. Right? And we're going to put this in our console variable here. All right? Copy-paste that. And now we're going to crank this to 64. Accept. All right, so now we're going to try and render this to see if we rendered it. Okay, render local. Okay, so we have the shots now in After Effects. I have RTX off and then RTX on. So I'm going to turn both of them on and I'm just going to turn the opacity down, okay? Now, like I said earlier, this doesn't look bad. This looks really good. Okay, and it is a little bit darker because GI was off. All right. Global illumination was off. But with RTX, okay, here we go. Watch this. I'm going to remove the opacity of the RTX off and look at this thing. That is the beauty of a ray trace GPU, you know? If you look at this reflection right here, this is using screen space. All right. But watch what happens when I turn off the layer and show you the RTX on version. You can actually see the trees, the barks around the area. I mean, look at this. That is just beautiful, you know? It's exactly why I love Unreal. You can get away with a screen space non-RTX. But if you want the best of the best, yes, you're going to have to click Add to Cart on that website to get one of those RTX 3 series. Or if you want, you can get a 2 series, but I heard that's actually hard to get as well. So whenever you guys ask me, do I need an RTX card? Do I need ray tracing when using Unreal for beginners? If you want the best of the best, you're going to have to get one. So hopefully uh, this video kind of helped you all out there as far as deciding whether to get an RTX card or not. And I wish you all the best on getting one. I know it's rough out there. Like always, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, and I'll see you guys later. So you want to make a movie in Unreal Engine 4 using the new MetaHuman characters, but don't know how to do it? Well, I got the video just for you.